Greetings, folks. Healer here. Today's replay is the second of two very close carrier matches that Gate Camper sent to me quite recently. Uh, in the first replay, which I featured a couple of weeks ago, he was playing the Tier 8 Japanese carrier, the Shokaku, and in that match, his team won with literally three seconds remaining. This battle is even closer, so I encourage you to stay on. This is a nail-biter right up to the end. Uh, and in this particular battle, Gate is sailing the Tier 10 U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, the USS Midway, in a domination match here on Crash Zone Alpha. There's uh, only uh, one destroyer per team. Now, Gate is using what I think is a pretty typical carrier build. He puts, he puts a lot of emphasis on supporting his torpedo systems, uh, since the Midway can drop six torpedoes at a time, so it's quite strong in that area. I've started this replay several minutes into the game since the early going uh, things were kind of back and forth, but the opponents have gotten a significant upper hand with a three ship advantage for them. So a three ship deficit for Gates team here and Gates is putting fire on this or dropping on this uh, Vladivostok trying to give his Ohio a chance to stay in the game try to even up this match between the Vladivostok which was much healthier when uh, Gates started his engagement and uh, this Ohio that is almost down. In fact, now it does look like the Ohio is getting a repair in, uh, and between the fire from the Ohio and these drops from Gate, uh, gonna try to even up the match here between these two battleships and uh, hopefully give the Ohio the chance it needs to uh, sink that uh, Vladivostok and stay in the game. So looking at the tactical situation, the allies and the opponents each have two caps. Uh, and uh, like I said, there's a three ship deficit for Gates team. Uh, so they have a pretty steep uh, point, difference, point differential, almost 300 points. Uh, um, now it's even greater because they just lost the Tirpitz, which was quite isolated over on the one line. And it does look like the Ohio, yes, the Ohio's fires, presumably from a secondary, does sink the Vladivostok. And so he stays in the game and they've narrowed the ship deficit uh, to two. Uh, and in fact, the hipper, uh, part of the reason it went to two is because uh, there was a hipper uh, on the opposing team over by, I think that was by Alpha, that was taken down by the uh, Seattle, or maybe that was over by um, uh, Charlie. So come in here with an attack on the Chakov, and he does finish off the uh, premium tier eight Soviet cruiser. So that narrows the ship deficit to one, and the Allies have gotten into Charlie, the Seattle has. I don't know how successful he's going to be able to do that because the Seattle does have pretty good concealment for a cruiser, but the uh, opposing destroyer, the Öland, is still in game. And so he may be spotting the Seattle and the Seattle may not be able to get this cap uh, either because of spotting from the destroyer or even potentially from the carrier. Also, there is a cruiser or no that's a battleship i think that's the iowa oh there is the erland so yeah the um, erland is probably spotting the seattle trying to take the charlie cap and so the seattle is going to get out and gate is going to come in here for an attack on the erland uh try to get him down because the erland is a threat also to this uh, tier 9 soviet battleship uh the zarya svobode uh, which means dawn of freedom <laughs> in fact the uh, dawn of freedom is sunk with a detonation of, i assume from uh, torpedoes from the Irland. Uh, so they did in fact lose that uh, in testing premium tier 9 uh, soviet battleship come back over here on a very low health iowa let's see if we can try to get him down i don't know if Gate is intending to try. No, I don't think he's going to try to go after the Ohio. The Ohio is facing a stream of fire from the uh, Minotaur and the Hipper, and then presumably Seattle would be able to hit him, but the uh, Minotaur does take down the battleship. So we are back to a one ship deficit. Uh, and again, the caps are even. Again, I don't know whether the Seattle should be trying to go back in and try to get Charlie for the team now that the destroyers down although the uh, carrier could go back and try to spot and uh, keep uh, the uh, trolley cap defended dropping here on a very healthy massachusetts uh how good is this oh pretty good three uh, bomb penetrations and uh the seattle um i come back to i think he's making a mistake here he's pushing too far forward he's going to put himself in a crossfire between a yamato and a Massachusetts, and also there is a Hohn and a Smolensk that we cannot see uh, that were last detected over on the one line. So they, in fact, there is the Smolensk, and he is, the uh, Seattle is definitely in range 
of the cruiser, uh, the Hipper, which was down by the Minotaur on the India line at India 4, uh, is finished off uh, by secondaries from the Massachusetts. Uh, so we are back to a two-ship deficit, and the Seattle is really not going to last very long. Uh, Gates is going to drop some fighters here. I don't know if it's so much to protect the uh, Seattle from carrier drops, because the Seattle isn't going to survive the surface fire. Uh, but m probably more to keep the battleships detected so that the Minotaur can remain in smoke. Yeah, in fact, the Seattle just succumbed to fire uh, from the opponents. Uh, but uh, the fighter is to keep the two battleships detected uh, to allow the Minotaur to stay in smoke and keep fire on these two battleships. Does get a few torpedoes on the Massachusetts. Looks like he's going to go for the Yamato this time because the Massachusetts is not pre presenting a very good uh, angle. Uh, for a torpedo drop, but the Yamato is presenting a very good angle. Uh, unfortunately, both of those battleships, or unfortunately for Gate, both of those battleships have exceptionally good torpedo damage protect protection, so even though he got four torpedoes on each of them, the amount of total damage really isn't that much, uh, although he did get some flooding. Uh, he's going to come back over here to uh, continue to put pressure on these battleships. Now, the... Um, Allies are just down to Gate and the Minotaur. Uh, in fact, this Minotaur has been doing a really good job trying to stay alive for his team, uh, maintain some focus fire. Uh, he's remained healthy, uh, so it looks like he knows how to handle his uh, light cruiser here. Uh, again, Gate is dropping another fighter. This is not for protection, but this is for spotting, so that if his or when his uh, squadron gets shot down here or has to retreat, uh, the two battleships will remain detected, uh, but the planes are far enough to not be in the AA range of either the Yamato or the Massachusetts. Now we see uh, the three other opposing ships. The uh, carrier was just spotted north of the Alpha Cap, and the two remaining cruisers, the Rhone and the Smolensk, are now headed toward the Charlie Cap. They're a pretty nice hit on the Yamato, and the fires from the uh, rockets do take down the uh, battleship. So now we're back to a two-ship deficit, and I think Gate is going to have to start working these two cruisers. The Rhone does have quite good AA for a tier 9 cruiser, but the Smolensk has exceptionally good AA, and these two ships are very close to each other. Their AA is going to be overlapping, so this is going to be a place that where right now uh, Gate is working with full squadrons, and he has quite a few planes on deck. I think he's going to start losing a lot of planes very quickly in some sustained attacks here. He does have his ship in a position that he's able to cycle his drops fairly quickly, uh, but because of the hot, the rate at which he's dropping and the rate at which he's losing planes from the AA, uh, he is his replenishment of planes is not going to keep up with his losses. Uh, I suspect, uh, but right now, again, he is working with full squadrons right now. Come in back on the Tier 9 cruiser, already starting to take some significant fire. This is going to be a rocket attack. A couple more fires. So he did set fires from the previous attack. He gets a couple more fires there. The cruiser's uh, fire duration is 30 seconds at, at most. Uh, so he's not running any commander skills or... Um, ship upgrades or uh, signals to reduce the fire duration. Again, I focusing on the Rhone, in my opinion, is the better choice here. This is the lower health and easier of the targets to go after right now. You can see fire from the Minotaurs, who's way down on the uh, Juliet line, trying to maintain the, uh, some safe distance. They are very nice. He gets a very good alpha strike with the bombs and the additional fires help finish off the cruiser. So now he's brought it down to a one ship deficit and the point differential is literally 100 points. Uh, the allies and the opponents have both retained two caps, but now he's going to be committed to going after the Smolensk, which has very strong AA, uh, even for a tier 10 aircraft carrier. And he, is, like I said, I, it lo already looks like he's starting to run with this diminished squadrons uh, based on the number of planes he has on deck. He loses quite a few rocket planes there. Is he even going to get another attack in here before his last plane goes down? Yeah, he does get uh, just one rocket on. So uh, you're going to have to keep focus on this cruiser that is just about to get within his range. The cruiser is only about five kilometers away. Now, Gates, I think, is uh, cycling backwards here 
to use the terrain to insulate himself as long as possible from the AA, from the Smolensk, and also be able to line up his attack. This time it's going to be with torpedoes. Uh, the Minotaur is uh, being, I think, fairly cautious, uh, trying to push back in so that he can try to provide some supporting fire where he can. Uh, but uh, without knowing where the Massachusetts is, the uh, Minotaur could be at risk as well. He does, uh, their gate has just earned Confederate, uh, which is cool, But and he's already up to almost 200,000 in damage. He did get another couple torpedoes in the water, I think. Uh, yes, they. Yeah, it looks like he did. Yes, he gets uh, one more torpedo with flooding. Boy, this Smolensk is right around the corner. The Smolensk has very high rate of fire, but unless he has IFHE, which is often not recommended on the Smolensk, uh, the Smolensk is not going to be able to get much in the way of Alpha uh, with his guns unless he's able to fire AP into the broadside uh, of the of the uh, midway at very close range. Uh, he's probably going to have to rely on his torpedoes to try to finish off uh, Gate here. Here comes the Smolensk, and the planes are almost literally being shot down. Yeah, in fact, they literally are being shot down as uh, he's coming off the deck here. Uh, no reason for the Smolensk to drop smoke here because he's going to be detected when he's firing uh, from within his smoke screen. In fact, they've now proximity detected each other, uh, so there's no way that his smoke is going to offer any benefit. Here comes the first set of torpedoes, and that's a very suboptimal drop angle. He's going to take what looks like two. Uh, he did get a kind of a panic drop of torpedoes on the Smolensk, uh, but it doesn't, well, there's high caliber. Uh, Smolensk has turned to get his other torpedoes off, but he's overturned, takes a torpedo. That is crack and unleashed. He is only going to take one torpedo from the Smolensk. In fact, he's gonna looks like he, looks like he's gonna torpedo himself and only very modest damage. Uh, but the, the uh, a, a very important uh, situation has occurred as well. So they've not only evened up the ship count, so that's important. But the other factor is that the opposing midway has made a very smart decision to move in and contest a cap uh, to try to give his team some insulation and some insurance on the points to be able to win here. Now we are down to less than a minute and Gates is going to come in with this one attack using bombers and then he may be able to get one more attack in after this, but this is going to be it. Now with the point differential where it is, if they sink the Massachusetts they might be able to win. The allies would get 40 points by sinking the battleships and the opponents would lose 60 points. So that would be a 100 point differential if they were to sink the battleship. But with the points spread uh, expanding, uh, because the opponents have now taken a third cap, is it going to be enough to win the game? So this is going to be the last attack that Gates is going to be able to execute on the Massachusetts before time expires. And uh, yeah, because neither team is going to get to a thousand points. I uh, can see some torpedoes were dropped by the opposing carrier on gate, and he does take a couple torpedoes, but he does survive the attack. Here is his last attack on the, the Massachusetts, and I'm going to freeze right here. We have zero seconds remaining with the battleship sunk, and the Allies do win by five points. So, a very impressive come from behind win 211,000 Kraken unleashed high caliber confederate and first blood in a or devastating strike excuse me in an exceptionally good match from gate camper thank you very much for sharing this with us unfortunately this is the only post-match result i have but i'm pretty sure that Gate came in top for his team given the performance here so i hope everybody did enjoy the replay in the commentary please do leave your comments below and as always we hope to see you out there on the virtual seas and we wish you happy sailing.